Yo guys, what is going on? It is Invin here and today what I am bringing to you all is a video guide for the brand new Great Sword in New World. Now as you guys can see here, I am only level 12, I'm on the PTR currently. And what we're going to be doing is just checking out the skill tree for the brand new Great Sword. Now a lot of players have been asking kind of what the stances are all about, which is something that does divide this weapon up from a lot of the other, in fact all of the other weapons in the game, is that they have two different stances which both give buffs and also so negative effects technically although they kind of weigh each other out and I'll show you guys what I mean by that and then I'm also going to go over the active abilities and the passives that you can get as well as the ultimate abilities as you can see I haven't unlocked all of these in the PTR yet you do start at level zero with no masteries at the moment so I'm just going to go through what you can actually unlock and kind of give you guys an overview of some of the abilities I will play some clips as well from the trailer so you guys can see exactly what these abilities do as we are speaking about them so firstly jumping into the two stances then so firstly you have the onslaught stance or the path of onslaught now this one here is after using an ability in the onslaught tree enter the onslaught stance for 10 seconds onslaught stance has the following properties outgoing damage is increased by 15% at the cost of being taken 15% extra damage now you also have the quick charge ability whilst you are in the onslaught stance heavy attacks charge twice as fast but consume 10 stamina each so they do consume stamina but you can charge them twice as fast now there has been some testing that some other youtubers have done on this and essentially it's the charge up speed not the animation so it isn't actually quite half as quick like it would suggest on the wording there but it is still much faster to get those heavy attacks off which does make this a fantastic contribution to getting a good bit of dps out with the greatsword. Now on the other side of the tree then here with the path of defiance, this one is when you use an ability from the defiance side of the tree, you enter the defiance stance for 10 seconds. Now this one gives you a reduction of 15% damage, so you take 15% less damage at the cost of obviously dealing 15% less damage. So it's kind of the opposite to the onslaught side, one's more for doing damage but taking more, the other side is for dealing less but also taking less. Now this path of defiance gives you the guard point ability which is where you block incoming attacks while charging heavy attacks so essentially obviously if you've got a build there with 300 strength or some sort of grit ability that you are using and you're going to be charging up those heavy attacks then you are going to be able to also block whilst doing that which is really really important and I think will save you in a lot of situations particularly in those PvP or endgame PvE expeditions the M10s I'm looking at particularly some of those mutators that is going to be a really really good benefit so as you can see both of these are for 10 seconds long and they kind of have the opposite effects with the quick charge then or the guard point abilities. Now to go over the abilities quickly then, so the three active abilities that you have on the onslaught side of the tree are the relentless rush, which is where you dash through foes while sprinting and applying a 20% slow for four seconds. The first hit will deal 110% weapon damage and the second hit deals 120% weapon damage. However, this second attack cannot backstab. So obviously because you're dashing through an enemy, it doesn't backstab and give you that additional damage there. Now, obviously when you finish any of the abilities on the onslaught side of the tree you will enter the onslaught stance that's going to be the same for all three of these onslaught abilities now the relentless rush can be upgraded with the relentless power passive which is where you gain a 10 percent empower for 10 seconds when using this ability you can also get adaptive rush which is in onslaught stance relentless rush applies a route to targets hit for one second so this is great for a little bit of escape because you're going through targets or indeed a little bit of catch up and stunning to then kind of follow up with more combos in defiance stance relentless rush heals for 15 percent of its damage so again you can see if you are in defiance stance and then you use this ability you will see that actually you're going to be able to kind of combo these two stances together in quite a consistent way that is going to come up with a nice synergy and again it'll be more apparent as we go through the tree now the other thing you can get here is Relentless Refresh, which is where it reduces the ability cooldown by 50% when you kill a foe. So if you do actually kill someone or a mob with this ability, then you have a 50% cooldown. Again, I imagine this will be slightly more useful in PvE environments as it is going to be more consistent. However, in PvP, if you do manage to get a kill with this proc, then I can see that being a very, very good ability as well. Now the next one here that we have is the Cross Cut ability. This is where you slash three times in quick sequence 
First hit deals 110% weapon damage, the second hit deals 130% weapon damage, and the third hit here deals 160% weapon damage. Also again, you will enter the Onslaught stance. Now the upgrades for this one are the Unstoppable Cuts, which is where you will gain grit whilst performing the cross cut. And obviously when you are in the Defiance stance then, which is the opposite side of the tree to the one you're in when this ability is first procced, uh, you will gain stun immunity while performing cross cut, which is really, really good as well. It means that you've kind of got a CC immunity ability with grit added in once you get this upgrade if you're already in Defiant Stance before using it, which is fantastic. The second upgrade that you can then get for Cross Cut is Cross Execution. This one is where base damage of the final strike is increased by 100% if the target is below 50% health. And if you are already in the Onslaught Stance, this threshold is increased to 75%. So essentially, if the target has lost 25% health or more if you're in Onslaught Stance, or 50% health or more if you're not, the final strike of this combo is increased damage by 100%. So you're going to be doing 260% weapon damage. As you can see there, it's usually 160%. It's increased by 100% if over 50 or 75%, depending on your stance. And like I said, you can see how these synergies of different stances start to come in. You're either going to get stun immunity if you're already in the Defiant stance, or if you've got both the upgrades and you're in the Onslaught stance, you're going to be doing more damage. So it's a really, really fun and kind of unique way of play style with the Greatsword. Now the final active ability that we have on the Onslaught side of the tree then is called Skyward Slash. This one is where you swing up in a brutal arc, staggering your target, dealing 80% weapon damage and applying 2 stacks of 5% rend for 10 seconds. Now obviously this is a max 3 stacks it says, but obviously you apply 2 at a time. Now if you are in the Onslaught stance, you apply 1 additional rend, which would then bring you up to that 3 stacks there that it's saying is the maximum. And obviously you enter Onslaught stance once the ability ends. Now the upgrades you can get for this are the Skyfall Sword, which adds a follow-up attack that deals 140% weapon damage by activating the skill again or using a light attack. And the second upgrade you can get here is Sickening Slash, which the first attack applies a disease which reduces healing by 20% for 10 seconds, and the follow-up attack strikes all foes within a 3 meter radius. So the initial attack on the person is going to give them reduced healing, so it's going to be really good for dealing damage and keeping them at lower HP, maybe to follow up with something like the cross cut that we saw before, which again, if they're low HP, can really do extra damage if you've got the upgrades. But not only that, it's going to allow you to have a little bit of AI AoE with the follow-up attack, which is going to be 140% weapon damage in a 3 meter radius. Again, particularly in PvP or if you're going into expeditions at the late game PvE, dealing damage to multiple enemies is going to be really, really crucial. So that is going to be a fantastic ability. Now to tidy up on the Onslaught tree, then we will quickly go over the passives that are available. So the first one is called Giant Slayer and it increases the base attack damage by 20% when attacking foes above 90% health. Now again, if you're looking at how this synergizes with the active abilities you can see a lot of those focus on doing extra damage to lower hp targets this one is going to mean that you're going to start the fights doing extra damage as well so it may be something that players take the opposite side of this generally players will take one of the top two so that they can get further down the tree or obviously one of the abilities now the next one is heavy blade this is where charged heavy attacks have a 15 percent armor penetration so this is really good and again you can see when you're in the onslaught stance the quicker heavy attacks that you're going to be able to do this in my opinion is going to be a crucial must-have part of any damage dps based version kit of the great sword now moving down to the second layer here, then we have Swift Onslaught, which is where you gain a 20% haste for 5 seconds after using the Onslaught tree ability. It can be any of the three abilities on that tree, and you'll gain 20% haste. This effect has a 10 second cooldown, so it can't just be consistently, but if you are balancing these abilities out, or when you're going into a fight, it's going to allow for catch up, or indeed for disengaging if you need to kind of reposition, do some pots, get some healing, that sort of stuff. So again, one of the most sought after abilities in my opinion here. We then have Keen Posture, which is after gaining the Onslaught Stance, your next attack within 5 seconds has a 100% increased critical hit chance. In other words, you will always do a critical hit when you go into the Onslaught Stance for the first 5 seconds of it. So if you are in the middle of a fight and you go into that stance, which is generally how it's going to work, then you're going to be able to 100% critical hit the next time, which is really, really good. 
Then we move down to Aggressive Shift here, which allows you to enter Onslaught Stance by hitting with a charged heavy attack, which means you don't even have to enter the stance by using up one of your abilities. Again, this will synergize nicely with Keen Posture, but it will also mean that some of the upgrades that we saw here where you were going to be doing more damage or this applies a root, for example, this one does a threshold of 75% health. Entering this by simply charging up heavy attacks is going to be a really good way to increase that damage. And as you'll see as we go to the Defiant side of the tree in the moment, this again might be something that is crucial for synergizing the abilities of the active abilities really, really well. Now we also have another one here, another passive, which is called Critical Comeback. And this one is where you become energized by landing a critical hit and regain 5 stamina and 5% base health per second for 5 seconds. Again, this effect does have a 10 second cooldown, but this is going to be crucial for staying in the fight and giving you some nice sustain. So another really, really good passive. Then we move on to the Crush the Weak passive, which is where critical hit chance is increased by 10% when attacking foes with an active debuff. Again, generally in PvP, this is going to be a really, really good one. Probably most players will take this as often all enemies will have some sort of debuff on them when they are in the fight. But it's also going to be really good in mutations and general PvE as well because you're going to be applying debuffs yourself. And generally, if you're in a party, other members will be applying debuffs too. So you're almost always going to have a 10% increased critical hit chance, which could be a really really good passive now the final passive that we have here is the step and strike this is after dodging you gain a 10 percent empower for the next three hits within 10 seconds now this effect can only occur when in combat of course and the attacks empowered by this effect restore 10 stamina on hit so if you are dodging you're going into this attack you could be that you've just gone into onslaught stance you then dodge to get this 10 percent empowered for the next three hits and they will also restore 10 stamina on hit so that then if you're going to charge up those heavy attacks that are going to take 10 stamina, you're going to be getting that stamina straight back. So it's going to be a really, really good way to kind of synergize nicely with that stance passive. Now, finally, here we're looking at the ultimate ability, as it were, and this one is Unrelenting Onslaught. This is where hitting foes reduces great sword cooldowns, light attacks by 2% and charged heavy attacks by 10%. It's almost like a passive ultimate, this one, and the cooldown reduction only occurs once per attack. So every attack that you do, whether it's a light or a charged heavy, is going to give you some cooldown towards the abilities, and again, is going to mean that you can really focus on getting a large amount of damage out. This is a really, really good ultimate ability, and that finally finally completes the onslaught tree. So next then we're going to move on to the defiance side of the tree. Like I mentioned at the start we went over the passives there but it is going to be dealing less damage to take less damage essentially. So we're firstly going to look at the active abilities here which are going to be steadfast strike. This one is where you stab your greatsword forward to impale your foes then pull back to rip the blade out which restores 20 stamina on each hit. The first hit deals 70% weapon damage and staggers. The second hit deals 120% weapon damage and pulls targets 1.5 meters towards you. This ability also generates 150% threat. Also, you enter Defiant Stance when this ability ends. Again, as I said with the Onslaught Tree, with the Defiant Tree, after every active ability, you will enter that Defiant Stance, which does have an impact effect on some of the other abilities and passives, and of course, the overall passive of the stance. So do bear that in mind for synergies when you are planning out your builds as well. Now, the Steadfast Strike can be upgraded with the Steadfast Recovery here, and this one is if the first strike of the Steadfast Strike hits, you are healed for 50% weapon damage. In Defiant Stance, the first strike also inflicts two stacks of bleeding for six seconds, which deal 5% weapon damage every second, and these have a maximum of five stacks. So again, as you can see with some of the other passives that are in the game, this could really add up, and the ability to heal yourself for 50% weapon damage is going to be really, really good. Now there's also a second upgrade here called Steadfast Refresh and this one is if the second strike of the Steadfast Strike hits, the reduce the cooldown of all other Greatsword abilities by 20%, which is again a really good one to synergize with other abilities, other active abilities. And you can really start to see now if you've seen the Onslaught side of the tree, I know some of you may have skipped this bit, but if you have looked at the Onslaught side as well, you can see how these abilities and cooldown refreshes and such can really start to synergize together. Now the next active ability we have is Calamity Counter. This one is where you block for 2 seconds while reducing block stamina damage taken by 90%, then unleash a counter attack that strikes all foes within a 4 meter radius. Now if you get no blocks, it deals 100% weapon damage. One block deals the same 100% weapon damage and also staggers. 
Two blocks is also 100% weapon damage, but it staggers for longer. And if you manage to get three blocks off, then you again deal 100% weapon damage with that attack. And it causes a knockback. So particularly in PvE, this is going to be really, really good. But also for playing things like the objectives in PvP, or indeed for things like the arena or outpost rush, I can see this being a very good CC ability. And again, if you manage to bait out other opponents' abilities onto you and then use this, I can see this being a great counter ability as well. Now the ability has grit which means obviously you can't be staggered from incoming attacks whilst you are using it and you can reactivate the ability or use a light attack to counter attack earlier so obviously it's a two second ability but you can activate this quicker should you wish to do so which if you've blocked three attacks already maybe you've got a lot of abilities attacking you that could be a really quick way to get a knockback create some distance or create a catch up and allow other teammates to come in and help you finish those kills in pvp. Now again, of course, you enter Defiant Stance when this ability ends. Now this one can be upgraded with Jagged Counter, which counterattacks inflict a bleeding for 6 seconds for each power level. Each stack deals 5% weapon damage every second at max 5 stacks. Now I would assume that that combines with the stacks of bleeding that you can apply here, which gives 2. So again, you would then get potentially 1, 2 or 3 lots of bleeding applied by this, depending on the level like it says. And then the second upgrade here, which is Critical Calamity, which is where the counter-attack crit chance is increased by 25%. If you are in the Onslaught stance, the counter-attack gains an additional 25% crit hit chance which again will be 50% total if you are already in the defiant stance the counter attack will heal you for 20% of its damage so you can either get healed or deal extra damage potentially with that critical so again you can see really how this starts to synergize across each of the trees now the final active ability then on the Defiance side is the Roaring Rupture. This one is where you stab the ground and send out a shockwave with a 4 meter radius that deals 120% weapon damage. You also gain an 8% fortify for 5 seconds for each foe hit. Again at a maximum of 3 stacks which would make it up to a 24% fortify for 5 seconds. This is actually really really good as well as dealing a lot of damage. Now this ability generates 200% threat, so again can be used for tanking in PvE, and also has grit, so you can't be staggered by incoming attacks whilst using this ability. Of course, you will enter Defiant Stance when you, the ability ends, and it is Taunt Gem compatible for any tanks out there that are wondering about the Greatsword. It is available to use this in PvE with a Taunt Gem. Now this can be upgraded by getting Purifying Raw, which cleanses two debuffs after using Roaring Rapture, which is a very, very good passive and ability that I think a lot of players in both PvP and PvE will definitely want to use. You can then get Adaptive Rupture, which in Defiant Stance, the Shockwave pushes foes outward by 3 meters, and in Onslaught Stance, the Shockwave pulls foes in 3 meters towards you. So either a push or a pull, depending on your stance, and again, another example of how these synergize together. And then the final upgrade that you can get here is called Intimidating Roar, which is where the Shockwave applies a 10% Weaken for 10 seconds on a hit. Additionally, after a successful hit, become uninterruptible for 5 seconds, which means you can't be stunned, you can't be staggered. You just going to keep being able to attack and do your abilities and the 10% weaken on the net is going to be huge especially in pvp but also in pve versus the bosses so again making the greatsword very very viable for both pvp and pve modes now taking a look at the passive abilities then on the defiance tree we have firstly cleansing chain here which is where hitting with the final attack of the greatsword chain reduces the duration of debuffs on you by 10 percent now this ability does have a five second cooldown so obviously bear that in mind if you are going to do a chain within five seconds it won't count instantly but every other one if you're going to do that or if you've used a bit of time in between you'll be able to reduce that timer by 10 percent, which is great you've then also got perfect vigilance if you are hit while at full health reduce the damage taken by 20 percent, and then gain a 20 percent fortify for three seconds again only counts while you're at full hp so may or may not be good it does also have a 20 second cooldown but the 20 percent fortify is going to be really good and if you are healing up especially in pve this is going to be great but also it could save you a lot of the times if you get jumped in a pvp situation so again another really really good passive we then have weary posture which is after gaining defiant stance the next damage taken within five seconds is reduced by 25 percent which is every time you enter defiant stance so that's a really good one we also then have blade herning which is base damage is increased by three percent for each greatsword buff on you so again if you are building up your buffs and your stacks of buffs on you you can actually get up to a maximum of four buffs which will increase your base damage so four times three there being 12 percent maximum damage increase 
We then have Unflinching Blade, which is charged heavy attacks have a grit and inflict bleeding for 6 seconds, dealing 5% weapon damage every second. Again, max 5 stacks, and I would assume that this combines with the other variations of bleed stacks that you can apply from various abilities and passives. However, this is going to be really good to give charged heavy attacks grit. Again, combined with the quick charge passive ability of the Onslaught, where you can get these twice as fast, so you're hitting a lot quicker. This is going to be a really, really crucial ability and passive. We then also have the Guarded Shift, which is where blocking for two seconds causes you to enter Defiant Stance. You must be in combat for this effect to activate. This effect will not renew Defiant Stance if it is already active. But again, it is a way that you can activate this without having to use one of your active abilities. So if you do want to get into this Defiant Stance, whether it's for one of the active ability buffs that you get from that, or whether you just want to take a little bit less damage, blocking for two seconds with this passive will allow you to enter that stance, which is a really nice one to have on. Then we have here Arrow Deflection, which enables blocking of ranged attacks with a Greatsword, but increases the stamina damage from blocking any attacks by 10%. So that's increased blocking stamina damage from ranged, from melee, and from magic attacks. But you are able to block the ranged attacks, which obviously does give you a huge advantage. So maybe it is worth the trade-off, depending on your playstyle. And finally, the last passive we have here is Flauntless Defender. This one is reduce stamina damage by 50% when blocking attacks just after raising your guard or with guard point. Inflict a 5% rend for 10 seconds against melee attackers at a maximum of 3 stacks, of course giving it a 15% rend for 10 seconds. Now reducing the stamina damage by 50% when blocking attacks just after raising your guard with guard point, which of course is the passive ability from the Path of Defiance, which is block incoming attacks while charging heavy attacks. So it's kind of a mixture of attacking but also blocking at the same time, and this one giving you a 50% less stamina damage during that is great. And also the ability to inflict a 5% rend is really good as well. Now the ultimate ability, if you will, from the Defiance side of the tree is Undying Defiance. Here it says you heal for 5% of the damage from all attacks. Attacking within 3 seconds of blocking heals you for 15% of the damage dealt instead. So actually this is a really, really good ultimate as well. You're going to heal from 5% of damage from every attack that you do, whether it's an ability, or just a regular attack, a heavy attack, whatever, which is going to be great for sustain, absolutely huge in both PvP and PvE. And attacking within 3 seconds of blocking heals for 15% of the damage dealt instead, which is essentially a 10% increase to the regular heals you're receiving from those damages but if you are blocking in between again if you're going to be using this as a tanking weapon or you're getting yourself in a tricky pvp situation where you need to block and you're going to come out with a counter this is going to be really really crucial for sustain overall making the greatsword a fantastic viable weapon in both types of gameplay now like i said throughout the video you can see how a lot of synergies will work between both trees of the greatsword so do let me know in the comments what you're planning to run ability wise passive wise what are you liking about it so far do you think you're going to use it more of a tanking weapon a dps weapon or a little bit of both let me know your thoughts and feelings on that down below in the comments hopefully you guys have found this guide useful and you can refer back to it at any point with the timestamps that are down below in the description if you do want to flick through and have a look at certain specific points but other than that that is going to be it for today's video so thanks for your time thanks for watching and i will catch you again very very shortly on a brand new upload take care and peace